Okay. Welcome, everyone, to the uh, third of our national webinars that the uh, National Work Group for uh, Community Resource and Economic Development uh, Impact Indicators uh, is sponsoring along with uh, NEFA and others. And in particular, I want to uh, give a special thank you to the Southern Rural Development Center who has been serving as our uh, host and uh, providing all of our technical support. For those of you that might not be aware, the reason that this work group has been working since 2012 is because we have a need to tell our compelling stories and we want to improve our ability to do that. And I don't want to steal any thunder from our presenters today. Um, this is, we just represent the different areas of the country and uh, often are visible at NACDEP and the Community Development Society uh, and uh, just trying to really work to um, make things more visible. And so you can, these are the goals that we have this year to really influence what's going on at the state level, uh, provide some, some tools, uh, really get to that point where things aggregate and that you see the impact of CRD programs and excellence of extension, uh, that we keep this dialogue and learning going on, and that's led to uh, the whole point of the webinars. And if you knew about this webinar today, you saw a link to a site, um, and that, at that site, the Regional Rural Development Center site, you can find other resources and other uh, information from the uh, work that's gone on by this very self-directed team. So with that, we really want to move right into the topic of our webinar today. And I'd like to uh, introduce our two speakers. Uh, Dr. Scott Leverage is a professor at Michigan State University in the Department of Agricultural Food and Resource Economics. And he has a long list of research accomplishments, et cetera. Uh, he's best known to, to many around the country for his work as the director of the North Central Regional Center for Rural Development, 12 uh, North Central states, for approximately five, six years, and only recently handed their reins over to someone else so that he uh, can come back and, and refocus uh, in his new role again as um, a researcher and extension. But prior to that, he was program leader in Michigan uh, for community resource and economic development. So he is our one presenter. Our second presenter is Brent Elrod, who is a national program leader in this whole area that we're talking about in community resource and economic development. Uh, and really his, his title is Program Leader for Community and Rural Development Nationally, and he's, he's in the Division of Family and Consumer Sciences, and he's also responsible for exploring and guiding strategic partnerships uh, development within federal and national organizations relevant to NEPA's mission. So we are delighted to have these two speakers here today, and we will be turning it over to them. I would remind you that uh, we strongly encourage uh, chat, using the chat to add comments, to ask questions, and there will be opportunities for questions. And we will have a short uh, survey at the end of our webinar today uh, because we as a, a work group take very seriously wanting to have feedback and wanting to model what we're trying to get others to do and ourselves do better ourselves at just gathering that sense of uh, evaluation as well as impact. So with that, I'm going to turn this over to Scott and Brent. Today I'm very impressed with uh, the organization and, uh, and Rachel's work to get the word out about this. Uh, hopefully it will be of interest to all of you. We had you fill out a poll at the beginning and there was um, there was some response uh, indicating that you didn't know what the common indicators are. So I think I'll just uh, talk for a moment about that. Uh, these were developed really out of the North Central region initially. Um, 
based on a, a conversation with the directors of extension wanting program leaders in the region from all program areas to come up with uh, you know some some things that they're all doing and that could be measured and uh, I think the community development folks maybe move faster and further than some of the other program areas in doing that and it ultimately translated into the North Central Regional Center for Rural Development um, being tapped to uh, collate these things and put them into a report so we could look at, at regional impacts. And so uh, the group came up with things like number of participants reporting new leadership roles and opportunities undertaken, a uh, number of community or organizational plans developed, number of community and organizational policies, plans, and adopted or, or implemented, number of businesses created, number of jobs created, number of jobs retained, uh, dollar value of grants and resources leveraged or generated by communities. There's a fairly long list um, of, of those topics um, that get collected every year by the program leaders in the region and the the NCRCRD puts out a report, and so if you if you haven't seen that report, um, you can go and, and take a look at that and get more information about what's in the indicators. But I think most of you are aware of them, and of course the south, southern region has been doing some of this, and, and their indicators are slightly different, but not very, and the northeast has been doing some of this as well. Um, and so, but they're, they're, all the indicators are, are roughly the same. There are some, some minor tweaks here and there, but not, not too much different across uh, the, four, the three sets. So with the conversation here is really, well, how do you use these things? And so I, I was asked to uh, talk a little bit about that together with Brent. And so we'll just uh, get into that. And, and we've all got lots of bosses. Uh, hopefully you're pretty much your own boss. You're, you work for extension, so you know a lot of your work is fairly independent and entrepreneurial, and so that's you know um, a, a main consideration is to you know think about your value and, and how your time is used. But you've also um, in many cases got a life partner and uh, who tolerates your work um, and a supervisor and maybe your supervisor's supervisor and uh, embodied in a dean or similar title or university president. And then you get budget from state government um, and USDA and, and, and the USDA money comes via Congress. So really you've got a lot of bosses in life. And so, you know, how you would use these things um, or should you use them varies by which boss you're talking about. So I'll just, um, give some examples here for each type of boss. And maybe somebody can think of a, a type of boss that I don't have on there, I don't know, but um, I can be really creative and, and uh, you wanna put something in the chat box about a different kind of boss, so, uh, let me know. So uh, so you're all, your own boss. And, and so one of the ways that you, know, you use these things is to think about your own efforts and what's your bang for the buck. Um, I'm always kind of astounded at the end of the year when I'm doing my annual consultation stuff. It's like, oh yeah, I did that and I did that. And it makes me kind of feel good about my work when I put it all together. And I think, uh, yeah, but, and, and Beth says appropriators are the boss. That's true. So that's kind of a subset of Congress. Um, but you know, if, you're, if you're out there working and interfacing with the public, um, and you're, you're, you're sort of not going back to see what happened, um, you may feel worse about yourself than if you do that. Uh, you know, I was always very surprised uh, when I first started going back and, and checking and finding that, uh, wow, people really did do things. You know, oftentimes I put a lot of effort into a program and at the end I'm, I'm just sort of self-critical and I wish this would have gone better and I wish that would have gone better and uh, are they really gonna do anything? And if you go back, you can find that they often do, usually do, and that makes you feel better about putting the work in. Also, if you're starting to collect common metrics and you're doing a number of programs, then you, know, you find that one's working better than the other, well, you can start to ask why 
why that is um, if you're if you're just evaluating each one separately without kind of comparing across um, you could miss some things and some ways to, to improve your work um, also if if others are collecting these same data and reporting them then over time you can help it can help you figure out what what you want to pick up what's what's new that you want to do um, I was mentioning to somebody earlier today that a lot of programs go through kind of a cycle you know if they're new to a state or a region there may be a lot of interest in it and then over time it could be that other folks are you know the, that they've, they've become uh, the market sort of is, uh, saturated and everybody who's got this pent up demand for that type of program has already done it and the new people coming on are um, not as numerous and so you find yourself with maybe some time and how do you allocate that time so it's a good way to figure out what to pick up and also maybe what to drop out of your program um, it, it's a great way to get people interested in your programs to say well my I did this program and it did X and you know, if you if people get the sense that you're really pr very productive in your programming, then you'll get um, more opportunities coming your way, more collaboration, people more interested in collaborating with you. What about your life partner? Uh, raise your hand if you don't have a life partner. Okay, nobody nobody raised their hand, so I guess all of you do in some form. Um, uh, so you know, you're out there a lot of evening work, weekend work, uh, those kinds of things. Um, it's just really nice to be able to come back and, and offer something concrete to your life partner about something that happened that you did. It makes them feel better. Uh, at least it does in my household, you know, when I can, I can say something happened as a result of um, me being out there. And it's, a, it's a little easier to talk about than a new bulletin or a new journal article. You know, the fact that you're having some uh, concrete positive impact on communities and lives I think uh, goes a long way to helping our loved ones understand our our dedication to our work and then obviously there's the supervisor conversation um, you know what if your colleague is you know collecting these uh, common indicators and you're not you know and they're they're able to to show all this behavior change and you're not you know how does how is that going to play out in, in terms of that that supervisor's uh, uh, response to your annual report? It, you know it might be it might be different, I guess. <clears throat> um, and then okay, maybe you're collecting them and there isn't too much to show. Well, um, that's an opportunity for a conversation with your supervisor. Well, it could be that the the group that you're working with is. Uh, you know, um, very nascent and, and hasn't had the time to be able to get to the level that uh, somebody else is doing. Uh, but it at least shows that you're thoughtful about the program development and evaluation process and that you're not just out there doing things and not really thinking about it. Um, on the other hand, maybe you do collect the common indicators and there's a huge success. I, I uh, was, uh, was amazed. Uh, you know, one time uh, Wisconsin came through and they, you know, the, the person had um, developed a new resort, you know, it's it like a, I don't know, $20 million new investment and 300 jobs. I mean, you know, why wouldn't you want your boss to know about that? Um, so lots of um, uh, good reasons to do it with your supervisor. What about your dean? You know, if you've collected these common indicators, and deans are always, you know, they always need a story about something, right? And if you've got um, some evidence that there's been behavior change, that's easier for them to talk about. And so you can, you know, you can provide a story because uh, the, the legislator in, in, in County XYZ is, is exercised about, you know, extension budget or, or something the university did. And you, if you can go back there and, and give them a cr concrete example of how this has made a difference in that community, it, it can uh, help defuse a, a political situation that the dean may, may be trying to um, work through. And of course, that's going to make you more popular uh, with the dean. 
which leads to my second point. If your supervisor wants to promote you, you know, you've got these these numbers, this evidence of behavior change uh, that can that can be helpful in, in telling the story. On the other hand, if your supervisor doesn't want to promote you, you've got some kind of issue with the supervisor or whatever. Uh, if you've collected the numbers, uh, uh, that can help you make a, maybe a lateral move and get into a situation where you're maybe happier with your with your boss, your immediate boss. So uh, that's a good reason to do it. I think uh, you know at the at the university level, um, most of us who have been in the system for very long know that some university presidents are more excited about um, extension than others. And same thing with state government. You go through uh, different phases with state government, with the state legislature or the governor, um, you know, lo looking for program change or um, Perhaps uh, you know wanting to defend extensions budget depending on, on on where they're coming from, and so these these numbers become very good tools for those who would like to make sure that extension uh, continues to uh, thrive in in the system. Um, and Mary brings up a good point. You know, sort of, sort of the the the. Um, way to, if, if you're interested in getting an award for NACDEP, uh, having some of these numbers behind your story is also helpful. And that can also play into um, promotion and, and uh, recognition. So um, USDA, I think this is uh, maybe where Brent comes in. So I'll turn it over to Brent now. Good afternoon, and uh, thank you, Scott, uh, for driving the bus. Uh, thanks, Mary and the uh, Impacts Evaluation Team for uh, recognizing the importance of this topic and helping lead the effort on behalf of the Community Resource Economic Development Program area. And thanks to Rachel and the South uh, Southern Rural Development Center for hosting. I also want to note that uh, we've got two of the current directors uh, um, in attendance, uh, Mark Skidmore from the North Central Region and Stefan Getz from the Northeast Region. And, uh, you know, before I go further, I just uh, want to bring folks' attention. Again, we've been sending it around since last week, um, the article that Stefan published that uh, points to the value of extension by again, looking at the data and the, the number of uh, the jobs that have been retained on farms as a result of the work that Extension has done. That has received widespread attention here within the agency. Um, it went out uh, to ECOP to the Extension directors and administration administrators uh, nationwide today. Uh, CFAIR has sent it out to their list. Others are sharing that information. So those are the kind of things that uh, really raise awareness, uh, um, not only within your own state where you may be doing some of the work, but then uh, when it has that uh, potential to be extrapolated nationwide beyond, then, uh, then it's going to get the attention of our leaders. So uh, you see the slide there that I've got up. Um, we need to show impact all the way up our chain as well. And so as a result, uh, you know that we develop an annual budget, not unlike what you all do back at the state level. And uh, we often have to justify that. Um, days are gone where we said we've got a program and presented anecdotal evidence about why it works. I keep the um, one-pagers that the North Central Region and the Southern Region develop as a result of the state's contributions on my desk here in my office. And so anytime I have somebody come by or have a sit down, they start to ask me what's going on, that's one of the first pieces of information that I hand them so that they can have that clear in their hand, shows the states that are participating, uh, the results that they're gathering. And it also includes uh, examples of statewide stories. And you know when we've got the opportunity for uh, USDA leadership to travel, whether it's our NIFA director or if it's uh, someone from across uh, any of the, the agencies within USDA or various mission areas, they ha reach back to us or we know that they're going to a particular state, I want to be able to push that information forward so that they can use that to 
um, make a public pronouncement or have the awareness, situational awareness, when they're doing that visit. If the information's not there, then or it's not readily available, then it's a deeper dive for us. We might go into the current research information system, which is going to have more of the technical report and maybe not necessarily like some of that top line, easy to digest information that our leadership values when we're putting together talking points or, or other material for them when they travel. So we certainly encourage you to, um, to look at the ways to get involved. Uh, and, and I guess probably the easiest thing is to, to what, what do you collect now? And then how can you share that so that it contributes uh, um, up the chain? Similarly, um, and, it, and I think you saw that in one of Scott's earlier slides, is that uh, when we do a, a budget submission here, obviously it works up the chain through uh, NIFA to USDA, then into the president's budget. From there, of course, it's presented to Congress, and uh, Congress will make the decision, uh, yay or nay, whether to see that request included in the actual appropriations budget that comes back to us during the fiscal year. So uh, one of the things we can't do as members of the executive branch is really reach out directly um, to members and share information. However, uh, we will get inquiries from their offices about the particular programs or what's going on in their states. And again, if we've got the information readily available, it's easy for us to be able to to get that front and center. Uh, what we also know is you have the opportunity um, back in your states to uh, share that information more directly, either through your legislative affairs offices at your universities or with your, you know, the deans and directors who might be able to, that would have the ears of those particular individuals. And so you see senators are especially interested in the statewide numbers and impacts whereas representatives really care for that uh, information on a, on a more granular level at, at their district. And uh, so, again, depending upon how you collect, uh, you can tailor the information accordingly so that folks understand and hear uh, about what's going on in their particular area. What we also know is that uh, the people that directly benefit are oftentimes the best advocates for the various programs. And so we know 4-H, uh, you know, when you get the young people in front of the members from their respective districts or states, uh, there's almost universal appeal and appreciation. And what I'd encourage folks as, uh, as they're, again, uh, identifying impacts, success stories, or they're hearing from people who have directly benefited is to uh, ask that person to help convey the message with the folks that ultimately control the purse strings, help them to understand the value of a particular program and how that program uh, can continue to benefit its, if it's resourced. In addition, uh, folks know that uh, we work closely to develop relationships with, with other key constituents here uh, nationally. And you see uh, across USDA, uh, we've got uh, our various partners, uh, Rural Development, Ag Marketing Service, Natural Resource Conservation Service, Farm Service Agency, um, all our, our potential partners in various areas with us. And then outside of USDA, Small Business Administration, Economic Development Administration, the regional directors come to D.C. quarterly, and we set up those meetings, and that provides a, a venue to be able to share information about the success, successful work that's being done out across the states and regions, and then be able to talk about potential collaborations going forward. I, I noticed uh, a couple things in the chat about uh, the awards information. Uh, I just want to remind folks that uh, um, last year the Stronger Economies Together program was recognized with the NIFA Partnership Re Award, uh, one of our big national awards. And that was, again, because of the strong evidence and impacts that that program had been, has been able to generate over the last several years. And so we were very pleased then, you know, in what's a very competitive uh, um, awards competition that uh, Stronger Economies Together was recognized and, 
uh, in that uh, with that particular award. Uh, folks uh, have had have some knowledge that uh, we've had several discussions with uh, ECOP, the Extension Committee on Organization and Policy, about how we continue to grow this particular program area. And so as, as part of that effort, uh, we're, we're developing a uh, concept paper that the regional directors are authoring around rural counts and why rural matters uh, to really look at uh, some of the numbers that point to the value of rural places and rural America. And then obviously we would like that to lead forward to a better discussion about how the program area can be resourced and supported going forward. Uh, I was just at PILD, uh, so a lot of the, the county level educators, and that was definitely one of the things I brought up uh, during my talk with uh, the folks that attended the, the session that I spoke at. Um, again, the value of gathering the impact information, uh, looking closely at the program so that we can uh, continue to encourage that at the, at the earliest entry points and then you know, develop folks going forward. And then the non-governmental organizations like uh, the National Association of Counties and NATO that are, are also DC-based but uh, have a national pre presence that also relates closely to the work that you are doing. So as a result, uh, we're able to share that information. Uh, they see, again, that we are um, clear and concise in what we report, what we take credit for. I think it's always... Uh, um, uh, difficult sometimes to say, yes, we've, we've done exactly this, but a lot of thought has gone into how the information is gathered and what credit can be claimed, and that uh, really goes back to um, the thought that this team and others have given in terms of gathering the information. I see George Morse is on uh, from the, the Northeast region, and he's been working closely with a group there in the Northeast to also look about uh, bringing them on board around uh, gathering some of this information. We've also had discussions with uh, uh, Don Albrecht, who leads the Western Rural Development Center, and some of the folks that are on the on the chat here today from the Western region about uh, ways that the the West can also participate and gather. The goal being that if we've got all four regions uh, uh, actively contributing, then we've got a better national picture that we can add up the um, dollar value of impacts, the numbers of jobs created or saved, and be able to, to really kind of have that larger uh, scalable uh, numbers that we can provide and give a clearer picture of what the program area is able to do. So uh, um, that's where we're at thus point. And, uh, uh, I'm going to turn it back to Scott. I think he's got this particular slide. Yeah, thanks, Brent. Great comments. I agree with everything you had to say. Um, just a, a comment here. Um, so we talked a lot about the different bosses. Well, you got one entity that uses these that isn't isn't the boss, uh, but more of a facilitator or helper in in uh, developing programs in the region and nationally, and that's the regional rural development centers. Um, you know, as a former regional rural development center director, it was very helpful to me to see these, uh, you know, different programs and the vignettes that Brent mentioned. Um, it's just helpful to kind of know what's going on in the region, you know, which, which uh, programs tend to be, you know, well-resourced and have lots of programs, which ones might need some additional assistance um, and and uh, we're constantly bringing out you know with 12 13 states there's always a new administrator somewhere and they may come in with uh, a lot of experience or maybe very little depending on you know how the hiring process goes and so and at times it's very helpful to be able to point to this uh, resource to get them aware of the different range of, of programs that could occur and some of the outcomes that they might expect uh, from the program to, to help them um, be a better leader in their own state. And then finally, um, 
you know, the, the, the regional rural development centers are, are really trying to uh, gather resources and help organize things and uh, to make everyone's life better uh, throughout the whole country, um, the communities that are impacted, but also um, provide support to extension professionals who are doing their jobs. And if we've got um, these impact in indicators uh, that we can draw upon, it helps convince our partners that we're a good partner for them. And, and that's resulted in uh, several programs that have uh, gone national and you know affected a lot of states. Um, the Ag Marketing Service Project led by the Northeast Center, uh, the SET Project, Stronger Economies Together, led by the Southern Rural Development Center, the CATE Project led by the North Central uh, Regional Center for Rural Development. So lots of, uh, you know, impacts that, that go to the states from uh, this very simple exercise of, uh, you know, sitting down and, and finding out what's going on in your in your program and then reporting that back up the line. Um, so there's there's certainly been some interesting comments. Uh, you know, I wasn't aware that uh, one quarter and one half of the points for a NACDEP award were, were based on outcomes. It makes sense that it would be, but uh, that's really interesting. Um, and Dave had a, a very uh, good comment, I thought, about what about the the resources going into the program area and Mary mentioned um, there is a, a centralized resource that does collect that information um, I found that it um, it's there but uh, sometimes you look at it and you wish you hadn't um, I won't name the state but there was uh, one state in my region that uh, in that data set that um, listed a million dollar of expenditures and zero staff um, and I, I knew the, the zero staff wasn't right, and I also knew the million dollars wasn't right. So, um, you know, it's um, it, there's there's room for improvement in that regard as well. I think. Um, this Scott, Scott, this Brent. Uh, I'll also note for Dave that, uh, of course, we collect the um, information by knowledge area, and so with this particular knowledge area associated with CRD, we've got uh, numbers that we can. Uh, call out by state, and I've I've shared those in the past with the uh, the regional directors. So that's that's one public source that we could use. Uh, it, it wouldn't necessarily be clear.